Hi guys and welcome back to Aussie Food Journeys. In this episode I'm just cooking up a crispy skinned barra with a warm potato salad. I hope you enjoy the episode. Thank you. Hi guys and welcome back to Aussie Food Journeys. Today we're just doing a simple crispy skin barra with a warm potato salad uh, just in my lunch break so I thought we'll just whip this up. We're sort of working on 101 ways of making fish because we have so much fish in our freezer at the moment. Okay so all I'm doing is just making enough potato salad for, well, for two of us. So I've just peeled a couple of potatoes I'm just I'm cutting them up to cook them just because I go back to work soon. Sometimes with potato salad I prefer to leave them whole and then I cut them up after they've been cooked. So a little bit of water. Bottom of the cut. So that'll whistle and then we'll just close it off and let it sit for a couple of minutes on low and then we'll just take it off the heat and all we're doing with the potato salad is it's actually going to be a warm potato cabbage salad so I'm going to fry off some cabbage Salad dressing is pretty basic and simple. It's a little bit of Dijon mustard, about a teaspoon I put in there. Again, this is just for like two of us. Oh, that was bad. Even worse. Yes. Normally, I'd actually mix a little bit of sour cream or some natural yogurt in with this. But um, I forgot and I used my natural yogurt this morning for breakfast. Okay, so what we've got in there is a quarter of a cup of mayonnaise, a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Um, these are just some homemade pickled onions. It's going to chop up and add to that. little bit of dill. I'm putting dill in the sauce as well actually. I'm just putting a butter sauce over the barramundi and some salt and pepper. Now let's give that a stir. And we'll toss our warm potatoes through this when they're done. It's whistling already. So all I do, this is my temp tone valve, so I just seal that off to stop it from whistling. Turn it down. We'll give it like two, three minutes, and then I'll take it off the heat and I'll fry off the cabbage. Right, so it's been two minutes and that's been on low, so I'm just going to take this one off the heat and put our cabbage on. While we're waiting for the cabbage, I'm just going to open my barra. Now, only one of these pieces has skin on it because Robert doesn't like the skin, um, but I do. So we filleted, we skinned one side and we scaled the other side. Yeah. So I've got a few feeds that have got skin. 
skin on it and then his piece is just skinless. So I just like to dry the skin off. Just pat it dry with a piece of paper towel or something. And then I like to season just lightly. It's a little bit of salt, pepper. In my wisdom, I would normally salt the other side first. But that's okay. I'll salt it when I put it on the grill. Because when I put it on the grill, I'll put it skin side down first, get it nice and crispy, and then just turn it over. Right, I don't know how many times I have to get this saucepan uh, fry pan handle gets really hot. But I've got my tea towel, and I did just decide to throw a handful of peas in with the cabbage as well. Just a little bit of extra vegetable. Right, so on my barbecue over there, I've got it preheated. I turned it on at the same time as I turned the potatoes on. A little bit of oil on that. Right. And then what I'm going to do is skin side down. Right. And then rub it whichever way. I feel like doing it. Right. I'll fold the other side. I'm just going to hold it down a little bit. See what happens? The skin will curl up. I'll do my peas and cabbage cooking there nicely. And my fish, and the fish inside down. And I'll put the lid down on that one just for a little bit. And we'll turn it in about two minutes. Oh, well my cabbage is nicely fried up. Just going to put it on the Okay, so we're starting on our lime butter. So just into the fry pan that we pan fried the cabbage in. I've just got some lime juice I've squeezed in there. Roughly about two tablespoons. And we're going to add to that a tablespoon of verjuice. You can use white wine. So whichever one you've got in, the, in your cupboard, fridge, wherever. So two, about two tablespoons of lime juice, one tablespoon of verd juice, and then we're going to reduce that until it gets a little bit syrupy. We'll turn it off and we're going to add some cold butter. Now the trick to this sauce is to be cold butter. Otherwise the um, butter separates and splits. So we'll just let that come to the boil. So you see it's just starting to come to the boil. Because I've used such a big fry pan, just make sure you give it a bit of a swirl around. And um, yeah, the small, well, obviously a small little saucepan is probably good. I've got my potatoes in that one. So yeah, I'm just letting it go in the fry pan. Okay, now what we want to do is turn the heat off. And I've just cubed butter up into little cubes. And if I can stir it, it around nicely. Just keep it moving. See, rather than it separating, it's actually bound and become a nice thick sauce. And we just add another cube of butter and a spoon to stick to it. It does say to whisk it, like most of the time I whisk this in a saucepan, but this is a non stick pan, so I'm not using a whisk, I'm using a wooden spoon. But you'll see how nice and glossy that sauce is going and thick. So it hasn't separated and become. Um, 
I don't know, you know, when butter separates or when butter melts, it actually is like clear and it's got the frothy sort of bubbles of the whey on top. So it hasn't done that, it's actually come together and bound into the nice sauce that we want it. Right, once that butter's nicely melted, we're just going to add a little bit of dill. And that's our sauce done. A couple of spoonfuls over the top because that's um, reduced lime. It's actually very strong. So this would be, you don't need a lot of sauce on top. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. Change hands because I can't do that. They're candid apparently. Oops. That was pretty aggressive, but anyway. Right, we'll turn it down, uh, put the lid back on, and leave it there for a couple more minutes. Okay, so the sauce is done. Don't need that chocolate one anymore. We've attracted a thousand and one flies. Um, the potatoes that we just let cook for a couple of minutes on the heat, and then we sealed them off and let them sit, they're all beautifully cooked. the dressing with the cabbage. A little bit more salt and pepper. I do like pepper. Somehow I think that's enough potato salad for more than two. <laughs> but that's okay. Fish is looking nice and beautiful, so we're just going to take that off and we'll finish plating up. And that's it guys, that's dinner done. So thanks for watching and we'll um, catch you next episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, yeah, next week we'll be most likely cooking something else with fish. <laughs> All right, thanks guys.